everybody and welcome to today's Heartbeat. I'd like to share with you a story and within this story share what happened. Share uh, I guess the ending, well there's never really an ending but the ending of the story. There was a man named Jamie. Now this is a true story. He was born with cerebral palsy and as a, a young boy he just coped with life as we cope with life. But as he matured and got older because of different things that were said to him, of things that he couldn't do because his muscles didn't work very well, um, he ended up being in a wheelchair, he didn't have the mobility of his hands very much. So you know they have those electronic wheelchairs that you can move around in um, freer. Um, but he became very bitter. There were seeds of bitterness that started to plant within himself and sprout and grow. And they were deepening every day with their roots. And his sister saw this and decided she needed to try and help him. And he'd given up on God and she, had, she still had a relationship with God and tried to inspire him um, to turn to God. So she didn't know what to do, but she bought him some tickets to go to Lourdes. Because when you buy tickets, if you aren't very mobile, you have to have an accompanying person. And they, um, she set him up to go on this pilgrimage to Lourdes. And so they have a group of people who go and a group of helpers. And he, um, you know, was always um, saw the worst in life. Um, would um, I guess be aggressive, be rude, be nasty in his speech because of him feeling like he was done badly when he was born having cerebral palsy. He could have even been blaming God, who knows. Anyway he goes along because he thinks my sister's bought me this and I don't want to waste the money so yeah okay I'll go. And he ends up being put into the, the baths there where the, the water at Lourdes, which if you don't know the story, um, a little girl, Bernadette, who was collecting firewood in Lourdes in France, up where the Pyrenees are, where they, they actually do the cycling races, um, the, you know, the Tour de France, and, um, well, they go through Lourdes. They, um, she was collecting firewood for her po very poor family. And she had apparitions of Our Lady. Uh, Our Lady appeared to her. Our Lady uh, shared with her different things, but at one stage asked her to dig in the sand, in the what well, was actually um, rubble. Um, but Our Lady appeared in a grotto, and a grotto is like um, the side of a mountain um, with a bit of a cave area. And Our Lady was there, and so she's digging in this this. Um, rock and soil and up comes a bubbling spring and the bubbling spring is still there to this day and people not everybody but people who touch it drink it bathe in it are often healed of their diseases um, of their physical ailments but always even if the physical hasn't been healed and you can't see a difference on the outside there's definitely stuff going on on the inside. So Jamie was um, put in these baths because they do, um, they separate the ladies from the men, uh, male to female, and they bath them. And then there's always um, availability of confession and Eucharist and uh, processions and lots of praying and worship. Um, and it's very beautiful. So he's in the baths and he doesn't feel anything. But he decides that he will must have had an experience or something because he will go to reconciliation. And then he's sitting there and the mass is on and this Eucharistic procession is just outstanding. 
and he wanted to go and talk to because they often have people who help them but they have spiritual I guess advisors who are there if people want to share things with them so he made an appointment to go see a spiritual advisor and Jamie shared that he felt different he felt like there was a God that loved him he had an internal healing an internal experience and from that point on whatever that point was if it was a day few days whatever people noticed a difference he no longer scrowled he no longer snarled in his replies he was peaceful and joy-filled and he wrote he wrote this every encounter with the light of Christ in each person sparked a light within me. It illuminated my heart, leaving no room for dark anger or blackened bitterness. Every encounter with the light of Christ, even in each person, he could see Christ in the people on the pilgrimage. He could see Christ in the other groups. He could see Christ in people and in the place of Lourdes itself and he was a changed person what was different his response people noticed his response to life to them to everything was different because God had softened his heart God had shown him love and he had accepted this love. God had always loved him. God had always tried to show him the love that he had for Jamie, but Jamie wasn't accepting it. Jamie wasn't opening up that love box. Jamie wasn't responding to what God was giving to him, drawing to himself. It was Jamie's response that had changed. His heart had changed. Sometimes we cannot change our circumstances. He wasn't healed of cerebral palsy. He was still in the wheelchair. He was still the same physical person. But he was a better, different person internally. God had changed him and he was responding differently. We may not be able to change our circumstances, but we can change how we respond to our God. We can change our hearts. And again, in many ways, we can't. You can put in the effort and you can do things. But it's God who changes us. It's our surrender, our response that allows God to flow in. In Psalm 51 verse 10, it says, Create in me a clean heart, O God and put a new and right spirit within me. God did that to Jamie. We can ask God to do that for us. Ask God to do that for our friends, our family members, people that we love and know and that who don't know God. Create in them, O oh God, a clean heart and put a new and right spirit within them. Do not cast them away from your presence and do not take your Holy Spirit from them. Restore to them the joy of your salvation and sustain in them a willing spirit. But restore to me the joy of your salvation and sustain in me a willing spirit. Lord, you're the one that graces me with the will. You're the one that graces me to have a soft heart, to surrender to you, O God. You know what, Isaiah 50 verse 4 to 5, it says, to listen like a disciple, the Lord has opened my ear. For my part, I made no resistance. For my part, I was not rebellious. For my part, I surrendered myself. So what we can work on is our response. We ask God to create in us a clean heart, to send his spirit to soften our hearts soften our minds, soften our pride, soften our spirits. 
And then we say, Lord, I surrender to you. Jamie went on to live a great life, still with cerebral palsy, but a life that was full of joy and happiness that he would spread to others. Each person loved Jamie and this love was extended to him and then from him to others. He could reach so many. He could share with so many the love of God, even though his circumstances had still not changed. God can do that with us. Even though the environment we are in, our circumstances, the stress of our life, you know, um, the, the difficulties, whatever it could be, God can change our hearts. Let us try and then work on our response. Let us surrender ourselves to this love of God. And then let us see what he illuminates and what he does in our lives. What's your response? What is your response? Pray about your response. Thanks for listening. Hello everybody. I've not really done this before, but I'm asking if you would consider to give to this ministry. To give so that we can reach more. More women, because it is a women's ministry. More people to know that Jesus loves them. More people to know that they're not alone. We have talked about many different you know, things of our faith. But we've talked about, you know, how to cope with stress. You know, um, when circumstances come your way, how to, I guess, stand solid and firm in your faith. How, how to cope with loneliness. How to not let bitterness come into your life. So many different aspects that we, I guess, live with or confront with every day. Hopefully it's helped you. Hopefully it's given you courage to continue to walk in the way God's calling you to walk. We need to reach more women. We need to tell them that Jesus is the answer. And we need to tell them that they are not alone. There are so many other millions of women in the world like them. And that we can, as best as we can, support them online. Support them when we go do our little missions and our little afternoon teas to encourage them to, you know, be the best they can be, to walk in the way God has called them to walk. Encourage them to be the woman that God created them to be. So I'm asking you, if you would give to this ministry, you can give by pushing on the Give tab and following the prompts. You can send information in to us and we could, with your phone number and we can ring you and we can work out, um, you know, you can ring the office, we can ring you, however it works. Would you just consider giving so that we can give away more? We don't ask for anything for what we do because God has given us much and much is required of us and we desire to give it away. We desire to reach more for Christ. We desire to encourage more women to be the woman that God desires them to be. Thank you for listening. Thank you for supporting this ministry. May God bless you in all that you do. And... Um, Everyone here who works behind the scenes, who works in front of the cameras, really desire to serve you, to serve our God. And may his, his name be praised. May he be glorified in everything that we do. Thank you for listening. <music>